Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to discuss percent composition. Today's essential question, how do you calculate the percent by mass of an element in a compound? And as is always, make sure you fully answer the essential question in your summary. Um, today you'll need your periodic table and calculators handy. Alright, um, quick review of chemical formulas and um, how they're related to number of moles. So as you guys know, I hope, um, a chemical formula indicates the type and number of each atom in a compound. For example, if we had H2O, that tells us that there are two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. Um, so number three says, so a mole of water is made up of two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. Um, so let's think about that for a minute. If I had one atom of water, I would have two hydrogens and one oxygen. What if instead I had two molecules of water? I would then have four hydrogens and two oxygens, right? And if I had 10 moles, well, that's not a good place to put it, is it? Let's try that again. If I had 10 moles or 10 molecules of water, that means I would end up with 20 hydrogens and 10 oxygens. Looks like 100, huh? 10 oxygens. Um, you could take that further and say if I had a mole of water, if I had one mole of water, keeping in mind that that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, I would, that would mean for every, I would have two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen, okay? Percent composition of a compound from the formula. Relative amounts of elements in a compound are expressed as percent composition. The percent by mass of an element in a compound is the number of moles of the element multiplied by its mass and divided by the mass of the compound and multiplied by 100. Oh goodness. Well, that's in words. What I just boxed in is the actual formula. Percent mass of an element equals the, the moles of the element times the mass of the element divided by the mass of the compound, multiplied by 100. Okay, um, this, if you would like, can go on your unit conversion table. All right, let's try to figure out how to actually calculate percent composition. All right, the steps to determine the percent composition of an element or compound. The first thing you need to do is find the molar mass for each atom in the compound, and again, you find that by looking at the periodic table. Okay, and let's see, I guess we need a practice problem. So we will figure out the percent composition of Na2S. Okay, so step one says find the molar mass for each atom in the compound. So we have Na, and on the periodic table it is 22.99 grams. And we have S, and it is 32.07 grams. All right, the next step is to determine the number of moles of each element in one mole of the compound. So um, the, the superscripts here, nope, subscripts, sorry, the subscripts here tell you the number of moles. Okay, so we that means we have two moles of sodium and one mole of sulfur. Okay, now we need to calculate the molar mass of the compound. The molar mass of the compound is like we've been doing. You add up two NAs, the, molar, the masses of two NAs, and one S. So when I put that in my calculator, I came up with um, molar mass of Na2S, I got 78.05 grams, um, and there's 
four sig figs, so four sig figs, so I have four sig figs. And so now we take all of this information that we just figured out and stick it in to this formula here. Okay, and we're trying to find out percent mass. So we've got percent mass equals moles of the element, and we do each element separately. So let's start with Na. So we have how many moles of Na? Two, because it's Na2, remember? So two moles times the mass, which we came up with 22.99. Um, divided by the mass of the compound, molar mass of Na2S, and we got 78.05 multiplied by 100. And that gave me 58.9109 blah 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 percent. Um, we don't count the moles as sig figs, it's just a counting. So we look at the other numbers, and so we've got 4 and 4. So our final answer is going to be um, Na is 58.91% of the mass of Na2S. We then do this all over again, but this time with sulfur. So percent mass of sulfur equals the moles of sulfur, this time we only have one, times the mass of sulfur, which is 32.07, divided by the mass of our compound, which is Na2S, which is 78.05, multiplied by 100. And I got, oh, I'm running out of room here, 41089 and so forth percent. We once again have four sig figs, so our final answer will be um, S is 41.09%. Now, to make sure you did this right, if you add the two percentages up, they should add up to 100 or right about 100 if, you know, with taking rounding into to account. Okay, so the mass of sulfur um, is 41.09% of the total mass of the compound, and the mass of sodium is 58.91% of the total mass of the compound. So that is how you solve for mass percent. It's actually not that difficult. It looks like a lot of steps, but it's actually pretty basic. All right, let's try a quick practice problem. Actually, why don't you hit pause and try the practice problem by yourself, then hit play and see if you, can do, if you did okay. All right, so we're going to determine the percentage of each of the atoms in a molecule of CaNO3,2. All right, so let's first of all make a list. We have calcium, and its mass is 40.08 grams, and we have one mole of calcium. We have nitrogen, who has a molar mass of 14.01 grams, and we have two moles of nitrogen. Remember, this, this number outside the parentheses distributes, which means you multiply. Um, and we have oxygen which has a molar mass of 16.00 grams, and we have six moles of nitrogen. No, sorry, of oxygen. Now we need the molar mass of CaNO32, and that would be 164.5. Now, we need to figure out the percent by mass of each of the atoms in the molecule. So, the percent of calcium, 
We start with the number of moles of calcium, which is one mole, times its molar mass, which is 40.08, divided by the molar mass of calcium nitrate, which is 164.1, and we multiply that all by 100, and that comes out to be That turns out to be 24.42% with four sig figs. And next we'll do percent by mass of nitrogen. So once again, we have, start with the moles, we have two moles of nitrogen times its molar mass, which is 14.01 divided by the molar mass of CaNO3-2, which is 164.1 grams. Multiply that whole thing by 100%, and, or 100, and that comes up to be, my God, with four sig figs, 17.07%. And last is percent oxygen. So we have six moles times the molar mass of oxygen divided by the molar mass of calcium nitrate times 100. And that gives us Let's see, percent oxygen with a sig with four sig figs is fifty-eight point five zero percent. Now again, um, I would double check to make sure these add up to just about one hundred, and that should be it. So the percent mass of calcium is twenty-four point forty-two percent. Percent mass of nitrogen is 17.07%, and the percent mass of oxygen is 58.50%. So hopefully you don't see this as being too bad. Um, so now the next part is to use this percent to do something else. Whoops, too far. We can use percent composition as a new conversion factor or an equality, like one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or one mole equals the molar mass. Um, so percent composition can be used to calculate the number of grams of any element in a specific mass of the con compound. And we'll be using the equality percent mass of an element in grams equals 100 grams of the compound. Okay, that right there can go on your conversion table. So percent mass of an element in grams equals 100 grams of the compound. And then from there, you just use the factor label method like we've been doing to solve. Okay, so we're gonna determine the mass of oxygen in 385 grams of CaNO32. Okay, so just like we did with unit conversions before, Start out with a math problem. We have, that's not gonna work. We have 385 grams of CaNO32 equals X grams of oxygen. Okay, now, just like normal, we set up our, equal, we set up our grid and we put 385 grams of CaNO32 over 1. Now we're looking for an equality that has grams of a compound and grams of an atom. We have that equality, right? Right here. Percent mass of the element in grams equals 100 grams of the compound. So what we're really looking for is percent mass of the element, in this case, percent of oxygen equals the, whoops, equals 100 grams of CaNO32. 
All right, and we did this, right? We just did this problem right here, and the percent mass of oxygen was 58.50%. And we're gonna change that. We're just gonna um, make that 58.50, drop the percent sign. So equals 58.50 grams oxygen. All right, now put this thing in the grid. Who goes on the bottom? We have grams, but we have grams here and here as well. So what else can we use to identify which one goes at the bottom? How about the molecule? We have that molecule, so we'll put 100 grams, Ca, and O32 at the bottom, and 58.50 grams of O on the top. Our units and compounds cross out, and we're left with gram O, which is what we are looking for. Now, we multiply across the top, and that gave me 2, 2, 5, 2, 2 point five grams oxygen over 100. And now we divide, giving us 2,25.225 2, grams oxygen. Um, we got to go back and look at our sig figs. We have 3 and 4 and... That 100 is just a straight given, so it's just the 3 and the 4. Um, so we don't count this as a sig fig, so we have 3. So it's, our final answer is going to be 2 to 5 grams oxygen. Okay, um, hope that wasn't too bad. That's it for today. Have a good one.